Hey y'all, this is A.L. Big Madame. It looks treacherous outside. So I'm gonna try my best to hurry up and do this review because yeah, I don't know about it at a time. So you see the title, you know what recap review this is. So let's get into it. So this actually left off well, this picked up where it left off last time. No, I'm sorry. I didn't did something to my tooth. But anyway, they had a Tina Turner song playing in the background while everybody was running around like a chicken with their head cut off. Don Cornelius read a letter that was sent to him that was stating that Soul Train was approved for two seasons two more additional seasons and they were actually in the first season towards the end currently so everybody was happy a party was go pop off and all that other good stuff right so life's good cool so Tess she you know was able to get her gig that she went out for so you know life's good for her as well so when this episode came on, it appeared that Dawn skipped out on the one of the last tapings of the first season of Soul Train in order to meet up with his wife. And he was in this car with her. He was talking to her, having an in-depth conversation. It seemed like everything was going well. And then tragedy was about to strike when he apparently was parked on the tracks and his wife was, you know, basically telling him he needed to crank up the car and move. She was about to get out of the car. They were about to get hit. So what happened was he was asleep. He was knocked out. Somebody, um, Brooks, that's his last name, the white guy who was like partners with him. He came and knocked on his window and told him that, you know, he missed taping. And where is he being and all this other stuff. Trying to figure out what in the world is going on with him. Because you know how he is. That's his dream. He likes to be in the know. He likes to be hands-on with that. And he was nowhere to be found. So Brooks found him, asked him where he was, and all this other stuff. And he didn't even know what was going on. So Tess and Patrick are at the house. And they are trying to figure out how they're going to squeeze in time to spend together. And she ends up handing him this book that was full of children that were up for adoption. And so she wanted to know what he thought about that. So, you know, they ended up going to the next scene and JT and Simone met up and they were gonna go out of town after their gig. They were gonna perform that song that JT came up with as encore, along with her brother, of course. And then, you know, she agreed to go on ahead and go out of town with him. And so that made him happy. He was here for it. Cool. Meanwhile, somebody is looking at him across the street with some binoculars. And I was like, huh, who is that? And they were like wielding this like knife. And I was like, this person is doing the most. And it was a like big, kind of big knife. It wasn't no katana and it wasn't no, you know, machete. But it was a little bit shorter than some of the machetes I've seen. It was a little thick. So I was like, what is going on? That's like a battle knife. That's the kind of knife that you go to a river. And if you plan to catch a fish by hand, that's the kind that you get a little bit. Or, or I mean, you can use it for that. And if a bear roll up on you while you were in the midst of doing that, you'll be able to kind of take it on. Like that knife is kind of massive to me. So I was like, excuse me, who is this? Y'all, I don't know why I didn't realize who it was, but I'll get to that later on. So, anyway, back at Soul Train, Brooks is in his feelings, and he's walking and talking with Don Cornelius, and he was like, you know, all these things are going on, and by the way, Gerald has his own office, so Don cut him off at the past, was like, what you want your own office, Brooks? And, you know, he was like, look, Gerald paid for his office, Cause old dude, he just there. Like I know before he was like in an office. I think he was at the other um, location before they did national syndication or uh, whatever. It might have been still in the same building, but anyway, he was kind of like sharing an office space, so to speak. 
and stuff was everywhere. So he does not have his own office. So anyway, you know, he was like, Gerald is paying for his own office, whatever. So anyway, after that, y'all sorry, my tooth is doing the most. So excuse me. And let me take this out of here. I know I'm wrong. This is my uh, uh, Chlorofresh. It's just water and Chlorofresh. This is a, a reusable um, solo cup. So that's what that is. That ain't no, um, this ain't no, I'm, it, my drinking, my two step going on at all. This is Chlorofresh. It ain't pleasant to me. I don't like most things, so that's not what this is. I'm not drinking no kind of alcoholic beverage. Haven't had one in like a month or so. Whenever I do, it's like a margarita, but I digress. Y'all know how I, you know, start talking about other stuff. So anyway, meanwhile, Don Cornelius goes to a dressing room that has Tina and Ike Turner in it. And you can hear them fighting glass breaking and all this other stuff Ike and his feelings and so Don is trying to get them to open the door so Ike comes to the door and you know Ike is irritated you know Ike was doing them drugs and, and he was drinking and he did the most so you know Don was like you know is everything alright you know he didn't do he didn't do nothing out of the way so Ike was in his feelings and I was like Lord just, just stop so then you know he was like anything I could do for you and then he asked Tina, because Tina was in there at the little table, getting herself at her, at her little desk that was in there, getting herself ready in front of the mirror. And so, you know, y'all know how that story went. She kind of couldn't really say nothing. And so, y'all, I was just, I got irritated like the situation was fresh and happening right now in front of my face. And I was just like, Lord, here we go with this. So anyway, you know. You can tell they was fighting and he went back to fighting her again, basically. So anyway, Gerald and Herschel are together at Soul Train in Gerald's office. And one of um, Herschel's goons is there with him, too. And they are having a discussion. And basically, Herschel thinks that because Soul Train is very lucrative, that he can get his share he can get a share, excuse me. And so Gerald was like, you know, this ain't yours, this is mine. And so Herschel was like, whatever is yours is mine. And, you know, eventually Don walked in in the middle of the conversation and introduced himself to Herschel. And you know how Herschel do, he tried to play it off and he played nice and he was like, you know, I am, you know, Gerald's boss and all this other stuff. And I was just like, sir, you're doing a lot. So anyway, he ended up, you know, leaving and then his little goon left out and he was kind of mean mugging on the way out. I, was, I wish I could have slapped him through the screen. I hate people like that. But anyway, so when they left, Don was like, you know, what was that about? Is there going to be trouble? Do I need to worry about it? There's going to be trouble. And he was like, nah, you ain't got to worry about that. It ain't like that. We just old acquaintances. And so when, you know, he remembered, they talk like almost every night. They have drinks together and talk. And so he knows his history. So he was like, you know, Herschel, the um, mob boss or whatever he, he referred to him as. He was like, yeah, it's one and the same. And he was like, but you ain't got to worry about him. So he was like, all right. So Don ended up having a doctor come to him, to his office. He was either at his office or at his house. And y'all, I don't know if it was last episode or the episode before that. I think it was last episode. He randomly passed out. Y'all know he doing all he's he snorting all these drugs and he drinking like crazy. So he doing all this blow. So he over here trying to figure out why he having all these visions and he was like, I keep having this dream. It's the same as that dream every time and whatever, whatever. So the doctor was like, you know, you just you're just human, basically. So you know he did the little eye exam with the little light shining the eye, shining the light in his eye and all the other stuff. And he was like, you just being you know, a human to whatever. So anyway, um, Simone came home and her mama was kind of like, you know, about time. And that dude who I told y'all, I feel like that dude was very much so into Simone, even though we know Simone is underage. And even though he ain't no bad looking dude, he, he know he wrong. He was looking at her like she was a snack. And I was like, sir, <laughs> you know you're wrong. But I think his name is Mr. Haygood or something like that. So him and some record exec 
was there. Uh, 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 music executive. Yeah, a music executive. They were at the house waiting on her. And so they were like, you know, we enjoyed the record. We want to offer you a deal and all this other stuff or whatever. They, you know, they've seen her. He, the guy, Mr. Haygood, Haywood has seen Hey Good. I think I'm saying it right. Hey Good has seen her at the club, and you know he's seen her before that, and he knows that she's underage and all that good stuff. But you know, they came to see her. Her voice is phenomenal, and they were trying to offer her this deal. I don't know who that is, but somebody need to get um. They need to do something because ain't nobody been checking their oil or something. Y'all, I'm sorry. It's the um, my daddy was a mechanic for the state of Alabama. And when I hear certain noise, I just be like, y'all need to do <laughs> stuff like that hurts my soul. They'll sit up there and drive something, tie up, and then all you had to do is get an oil change. Like, I can't. So, anyway, I'm sorry. That, that just, it does something to me. So, anyway, her mama was like, you know, I need to speak to you alone to her daughter. And it got to the point where, you know, she expressed her grievances, but at the same time, she was like, you know, this is your dream. And only you can trust your own self with your dreams. So she gave her the option to decide whether or not she wanted to take up the offer that was given to her. So, you know, at the end of that, her, she invited her mom to the set that they were having. She was like, well, about time. Because, you know, she knew she was going, but she just never invited her. So she invited her mama to see them perform encore. They were going to perform at this club. So... That ended up turning out pretty good for her. So, back in Soul Train, the Soul Train line is in full effect. And I mean, Flo was getting it. That helped get on my nerves. Because she's a hoe. You know she's a hoe. But anyway, I, I think she tried to turn over New Leaf as far as that's concerned. But y'all know. That James Brown situation and that um that situation with... um Not James. What's James Brown? No. The dude that... uh. Bobby Brown was playing. I forgot what his name was. But anyway, she just was doing the most, trying to get ahead. I was like, oh, gosh. But anyway, they were setting it all. I ain't going to lie. Flo be getting it. She can sing and she can dance. But anyway, so Tess rolled up, and she's watching the dancers. The dancers were really getting their life. And so apparently this was the last taping of the first season of Soul Train. And they cut. Everybody was excited. All of the Soul Train dancers realized that Tess was there. And they were like, Miss Tess. Miss Tessa. And then they ended up running up to her and embracing her. And then it got to the point where Dawn was like, she's here on business. And I was like, Lord, okay. So what this going to be like? So he ended up inviting her um, backstage to his office or wherever the office is at or whatever. And um, before that even happened, before Tess... Before they saw Tess, it was funny because Flo had just did what she did. Kendall was off on the side of the stage, I guess. And some random girl rolled all of the way up on him. She really was trying him. And, you know, Kendall might not necessarily understand when he's being hit on. But, yeah, this girl was really going in. So, Flo came over there. She shut that down. It was over with. So, anyway... Back to what I was saying before. So she went to the back and was talking to Dawn and, you know, they toasted to the new, you know, renewal of his seasons two and three that are going to be up and coming. And, you know, he was like trying to get her to come back on board. Right. And so she was like, well, you know, what's going to go on with my pay? Am I going to get paid more? What's up with that? Ain't nobody got time. You know what I'm saying? She needs to know if she's going to get compensated handsomely or not. And so, you know, he was like, you know, we can work with that. And she wanted to know if she would be able to do, like, have more creative control. All the things that you need to be asking. Especially when you're dealing with a gold mine like Soul Train. And you are coming up with all this stuff that people live for. So, I don't blame her for asking these questions. So, she did all that. And, you know, she, she was like, you know... I'll think about it, but, you know, she was talking about how she was going on her dancing tour. And, you know, she went on ahead and left, put a little, her little uh, drink down and went on about her business. And so he was looking like, you know, I, I'll wait. That's how he was looking. He was like, I, you, you good, so I'll wait. So I was like, yeah, you better know. So anyway, Gerald met up with Herschel, and they were at this, uh, this little shady looking 
a warehouse and it was a lot of goons around too. I didn't even know if it was Herschel's goons or if it was Gerald's goons, but they were talking and of course Herschel still was trying to strong arm Gerald into giving him a piece of the pie, which is Soul Train. And he was like, look, I can't do that. He keep on trying to tell him he can't do it. And at first, one of Herschel, Herschel might have, I think, somebody took Gerald's weapon off of him. And they were like, you know, you never can be too careful, whatever. Y'all, it got to the point where the dude threw his gun back at him. I think it was one of the guns. Threw his gun back at him. They ended up shooting Gerald. He did. I mean, not shooting Gerald. Shooting Herschel. And, you know, Herschel was still there. He was like, man. You know, had his own little, you know how when people dying, they had their own little, little, little mini speech. And so Gerald got tired in his spirit. He went on ahead and killed him off. And so Gerald made it plain that he is out the game. And so he was like, all right. He walked off like a ball. So I guess all the goons cleaned up that mess. I was like, Lord. So like I said before, Encore is performing at this club. And it is really making waves to the point where Don even showed up. Like, that's how big it was. It's like, how your boss that that you are dancing for is showing up for you to sing. Apparently, you are amazing. So, he showed up, and Ike and Tina were there as well, and um, like I told y'all before, Brianne, the mama, she showed up. We are waiting for JT to show up. You know, he is one of the members and the person who created the song that they are about to sing. You know what I'm saying? He wrote the song, so we waiting on him. So, it gets to the point where Kendall was like, look, if your boyfriend don't show up, Flo can take his spot. She can fill in. And so Simone has her reservations about it. And he was like, look, she has gone over this song with me. She knows the steps. She can fill in if she needs to. So we can't. So what do you want to do? You want to sit here and wait on your boyfriend? Or you want to go ahead and, you know, go ahead and do what we need to do if he don't show up? So, you know, ultimately they ended up going ahead. So I was like, Lord. So, <clears throat> um, Reggie... The reason why JT's not even there is because Reggie told him that he needs to prove that he actually is not a snitch and he actually is down for the cause. And so they done rolled up to Patrick Lorraine's house, which is Tess Lorraine's husband. So they had their house and he was like, you got to prove your worth. He gave him a gun and he had to sneak into the house and kill him. So... They do what they do with some scenes. They went back and forth showing the performance. They did an amazing job with the performance. They showed him, JT, going around the house. He looked in the window. Meanwhile, Tess was like, you know, I got to show you something. He was the, the husband was looking through the adoption book, and they were talking about that. And so she was like, you know, I want to see if I can run this number by you real quick. So she came out there with a, I don't know why, a boa. I was just about to say, what is the name of the thing? She had like a boa on, if I'm not mistaken. And this lingerie, that woman's body is everything. I, I got to give it to her. That woman's body is everything. So anyway, she did this little number and then she went into this seduction mode with her husband. And like I said, JT is lurking around the house and the door was open. I'm like, why are y'all leaving doors unlocked? I understand it's the seventies, but no, I would have never had my door unlocked if it were locks invented. My door gonna be locked. That is, that is what it's for. If I'm in the house, I'm locking the door unless I'm outside. And even now when I'm outside the door, I lock the door behind me. I don't have time. Somebody might roll up and I ain't even see them in the bushes and they just walked in behind me. But anyway, the door was unlocked. He snuck in the house. And like I said, Tess is over there seducing her husband. He getting his life and then he hears a noise. So he kind of throw her to the side. And he going to detective mode. And so she was like, hello, your wife is trying to seduce you. And so he was like, hold on for a minute, I heard something. So he told her to stay on over there. So he got up and like I said, he went into detective mode. So he kind of looked around, he didn't see nobody. He looked out the door. JT was around the corner, hiding. So JT just thought he was just gonna walk on off like ain't that happened. Of course, Reggie confronted him and was like, you know what time it is. So, <laughs> Anyway, I was like, Lord, don't nobody have time for this boyfriend to get killed for no reason. So, everything happened with the performance. It was an amazing 
um, experience. Everybody lived for them. And Simone is in her feelings because JT did show up. So she was like, look, I just want to go home. And so they were like, are you crazy? Are you kidding? And so she was like, look, I don't feel like doing all this other stuff. I just want to go home. So her mom was like, all right, baby, come on, let's go home. Took her home. So then Don Cornelius is still at the club. And he asked the bartender to give him a bottle. You know, he was going to pay for this bottle. So like I said earlier, Tina and Ike are there. And they ended up getting this bottle for them. And that was amazing. So I was like, cool. So he sits down with them. He's trying to talk to them and see what they thought about, you know, go, having, being on the show. And so, you know, Ike is kind of trying to act like, He's playing hard to get at first, but then he, you know, basically was like, yeah, we'll be on it. The money's right. We'll, we'll be back. And so he was like, that's great. Okay. We can work with that. So I was like, okay, that's fine. So, um, even at the table, they were arguing. I was like, Lord, I can see the turn. We're sitting up there arguing. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. Y'all are in public. He's still doing the most. I don't think I could have ever been with nobody like him. He is just ridiculous. So... Like I said earlier, Reggie's over here. He about to kill JT. So he basically puts him in that position where they had the gun in his face. And he was like, you know what time it is. So he was about to get killed. And then a bullet comes from out of nowhere. I'm thinking that Patrick that came out of nowhere because, you you know, Patrick be Johnny on the spot. If you don't know what Johnny on the spot means, look that up. But anyway, that's a saying that a lot of us say. It's, it's, it's some things that a lot of older people say, I get that from my mama. I think my grandmama used to say it. But anyway, he was Johnny on the spot. He usually is Johnny on the spot. But it ended up being old dude that's staying with Simone, Kendall, and their mama. He came out of nowhere with this assault rifle. He killed Reggie. And he over here is like, you know, yeah, I did what I had to do. And so it got to the point where he was over here thanking him for killing him. Cool. So... They ended up, um, they ended up, um, he ended up taking him to this booth. Well, he went to this phone booth so he could call Simone. So Simone's at the house and, you know, he was like, you know, we, ne we gotta go. I want to go on here and get out of town like we said we were going to do. And so she was like, well, you know, I gotta let you know something. I got this offer today and it was for her to do some stage play in New York and she was gonna finish up school there. And so he was like, that's amazing. He was being supportive of that. And she was surprised that he was supportive of that. And so, you know, he was like, she was like, well, you know, you can come with me and go to New York. And so he was like, no, I can't do that. And he was like, you know, all you gotta do is just do what you're doing. One day you gonna look up at one of your shows and I'm gonna be there in the crowd. So he ended, he ended up getting off the phone with her and old dude, uh, what's his name, Barker, Lieutenant Barker or whatever his name was. He ended up saying, you know, JT was like, thank you so much, you know, for all your help. He was like, no, no, thank you. So he ended up stabbing him. Y'all, I didn't even realize that was him. That was him who was looking at him from across the street. He done stabbed this boy in his abdomen, then tore him down. He didn't kill him and threw him in the trunk with the other boy. I was like, Lord, have mercy. This is too much. So he was like, I was just completing my mission. And he was acting like he was talking to Brienne's husband again. I was like, Lord, this man gotta go somewhere and get committed. He gotta go get some help. Talking about PTSD and, and everything else that's going on in life. Oh yeah, he needs some help. So I was like, Lord, don't nobody have time. So Don and Gerald met up and Gerald had this idea about Soul Train membership uh, club, some kind of club. Trying to have, still trying to hold on to these club ideas and so Don was not here for that. He didn't want to hear nothing about that. And so he was like, this is my dream. You know how he feel about that. He was like, everybody trying to benefit off my dream. No, this is my dream. So they ended up fighting. They fought for a while. And then it just got to the point where Don was sitting up there. was like, so how much is this going to cost me? I was like, really? You sat up here and fought this man. You could have just been like, look, man, this is my dream. I don't want you. You know, he could have said his piece without fighting. But he really fought this man and like beat him. <laughs> and then he asked him how much was it going to cost him. I was like, Lord, y'all are doing the most. So, um, Don randomly met up with Tina Turner outside somewhere. And so he was like, you know, look, I could pay for you to go somewhere. You can go somewhere for the night. And so she was like, what are they supposed to do? You know, this is Ike and Tina. 
what is that going to do? Because she was supposed to perform and all that. So, you know, he kept trying to get her to get away from him. And I was just like, okay. So she ended up performing despite all of that. She did an amazing job. The person who is the actress, y'all, I can't think of her name, but if you ever watched the, the TV show, The Game, it was the one who was um, the baby mama, the child's mother, um, Janae. Yeah, her. She does an amazing job. She played with one of the Whitney Houston's. She she did all. She's been doing a lot lately. She she was in. Um, I was about to say Black Lightning again, like I did the other day for a show. She was in um, Luke Cage, and she has really been taking off doing a whole lot lately. People have been really entrusting her with these roles where she's been playing these very famous people. She did great to me. So anyway, <clears throat> Simone is packing to go to New York and her brother is talking to her and you know she was like well you know I'm packing to go to New York and so he was like you ain't going nowhere mom's not going to approve and he was like and she was like well but she did though she told me that I can do what I want to do it's my dream and I can, I can you know I have to trust my own self with my dream or whatever the little speech was and so he was like he got in his feelings and he was like you do what you always do and made it out to be like she was selfish and he got mad and stormed off so basically he's gonna be alone by himself if he ain't already you know I, I think he's off with Flo anyway so I guess he was at the house visiting because old dudes still live at the house so I don't know what that's about so anyway Don showed up to get his wife for their little anniversary. And so, you know, he cleared out this restaurant and she was like, this place is usually busier. I don't know what's going on. So, you know, he was like, oh, it is. You know, it's just, you know, he basically rented it out for just them. And so he presented her with this big old box that had this fur in it and she loved it. But then it got to the point where she was like, so where's your wedding ring? When was the last time you wore it? Do you even know where it is? And then she got down to the nitty gritty, which was sign these separation papers because I ain't here for it. And I'm about to take my ring off too because you ain't been wearing your ring, so what am I wearing mine for? And they're just not on the best of terms right now. And she got up and walked off. He and his feelings. And I'm just like, oh well. Um, Brienne is doing this song where she's singing to Simone and eventually Simone joins in and Simone is playing the piano and they're singing this song to one another. It is amazing. And while the song is happening, they are showing, uh, it, it, where they were, they were kind of showing like a flash forward where they showed Kendall, Flo and some other guy. I didn't, it went by too fast. For me to see who the guy was probably is one of the dancers or somebody that i've seen before they were performing i guess as encore they were just performing somewhere and that kendall looked like he was having fun enjoying himself he looked really really happy they did a flash forward and they had patrick and tess lorraine dancing and at the house living it up having a good time and you know showing their happiness and then they showed brianne and i think she was with old dude that's living at the house about to go out on a date and then they showed current day which is Simone and she was in New York in her dressing room getting ready and then they told her that you know they are about to need her out on stage and so she said she'll be out there in a minute and it was sad because she had a picture of JT on her dressing uh, uh, her uh, table and I was just like oh she got in there Still thinking that he gonna show up one day, but he's not because he's dead. Unless it's a red herring of some sort going on, I don't know. But he supposed to be dead in the trunk, and that dude is pretty serious. So I'm pretty sure he actually is dead. So that's sad. Um, so y'all, the end of the episode is upon us. So Don is in this bed full of women all everybody every single last one of them are knocked out and he comes to and this one of the women wakes up and they're like um happy new year baby and kissed him he was like what it's the new year he didn't even know the new year happened he didn't even know what year he was in he didn't know what was going on and it was 1973 and so he was like 1973 so yeah 
he didn't dr he didn't got so drugged out that he don't even be knowing what day it is or what year it is. So anyway, I enjoyed that episode. I am looking forward to however many more they are going to allow for this season, and hopefully it got renewed. I hope y'all enjoyed this review. Y'all let me know down in the comment section. Comment, like it, subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's all right as well. So anyway, I hope y'all are having a wonderful Sunday because I am. So y'all have a good one.